Good evening. It's uh, another edition of World Softball TV. I'm your host, Ryan Wood. And this week, we've got a special guest. It's uh, Tom Buckin, CEO of Slow Pitch Ontario. Uh, lots of people uh, is going to love to hear this, uh, this man speak. He is a pioneer of the sport of slow pitch here in Ontario. And uh, he's going to have lots to say to talk about the upcoming season, some of the problems that they had to go through last year with COVID. And we'll talk about the future of the game and, and where he's at. 31 years at the helm of uh, a CEO of Slow Pitch Ontario, Tom Buckin, is going to be joining us. And we're joined. Tom Buckin, thank you very much for your patience. Eventually, I'm going to figure out this technology stuff. It's uh, it's still new to me, and uh, maybe eventually, uh, as we continue to grow World Softball TV, um, we'll be able to uh, get some uh, some tech savvy people to uh, to join us. I'm right with you, Ryan. Uh, we need some help sometimes, but that's okay. Absolutely. Um, well, I uh, I appreciate you uh, taking the time to uh, to join us here this week. I know it's um, you know you you've got a lot on the on your plate at the moment. Uh, with all the various uh, um, various programs that you'll be running and in and, and the upcoming season. Um, you know, let's talk about the, uh, the program of Slow Pitch Ontario, how it uh, kind of began, and uh, what, um, you know, where you started it back in, I think, 1989, now uh, 31 years later. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, actually, Slow Pitch Ontario started in 1982. Oh, wow. There was a, a group of uh, enthusiasts that felt the game needed some leadership. And, and one of the pioneers was a, by, a fellow by the name of Chuck Pete. Um, and he started uh, with a bunch of group. I was in Sault Ste. Marie at the time, my hometown, and I got a call from uh, Chuck and that, asking if I'd be interested in uh, helping this volunteer group get started. So in 1982, um, we started. And um, actually, in 1989, I got a call from, from the group here in St. Catharines. I was still in the Sioux at the time and asked me if I'd be interested in a one-year contract to try to get Slow Pitch Ontario kind of up and running as, a, as a, an association, so to speak. So uh, 31 years later, I'm still here on my one-year contract. So that's kind of where we're at. Now, a lot of people may not know this, Tom. Uh, Slovich Ontario is a non-for-profit organization. It's uh, government regulated uh, through Softball Ontario and Softball Canada. You know, a lot of people who may not know you may think, well, Slovich Ontario is owned and operated by Tom Buckin. Talk, talk to the people about, about the actual infrastructure of Slovich Ontario. Sure. Um, Slovich Ontario has a, has a, a group of... Uh, Board of Directors that has elected every every year um, from our membership base. Um, the Board of Directors are, uh, which Ryan, you probably know most of them, if not all of them, they're from across Ontario, and they, they've got truly the, the game at heart, and, and we, uh, as a group, make decisions um, and provide leadership for, um, for our membership, which, again, we have zone directors out in the field. We have maybe 20... 20 zone directors that help us with our message and another maybe 25, 35 tournament directors that also uh, work with us. And with respect to our leagues, maybe 300 or so leagues and league executives that again work with us for the betterment of the game. Now, as, um, as an organization, I mean, you started it in 82. You've been at the helm since uh, for the last 31 years. Um, you know, talk about the trials and tribulations of of running Slow Pitch Ontario back before the days of cell phones and technology. Mm. And, you know, talk about how you had to, like, run a tournament and make probably 100 phone calls to all the people that were going to enter. Talk about that and the changes that has made a little bit. Crazy, crazy times. You know, you look at tournaments, you look at league registration, everything was done via – you know, some people probably haven't even heard of our operator on a fax machine. Um, you know, all of our applications came in via fax or via mail. Um, we didn't have any online opportunities. Um, so 
it was, to your point, a lot of phone calls, a, a lot of conversations. That was really our only quick method of communication. So we had to contact everybody. Uh, you know, we got fax applications in, and, and, you know, we still have a few of those fax applications. But as you know, you can't even read them anymore because they've uh, faded so much. But it was a challenge looking back at it. We didn't know any different at the time. But knowing what we know now, my God, I, I don't know how, you know, we, we ran provincial championships at times with 600, 700 teams in the uh, early 90s, and we didn't have a lot of technology going at that time. So um, technology really changed the game, um, the communication of the game and that, the promotion of the game. But it, in, in those days, it was all phone call and fax. Do you think that it um, made the game kind of grow bigger? Or has the game kind of always had, I mean, 600 team provincial championships, as you talked about? You know something? I, you know, I can't say it's uh, – I, I can't see the game, it's grown the game anymore, technology. I, I think it's made the game easier to communicate for tournament directors, for league executives, for Slow Pitch Ontario, and, and all of our all of our associations. The communication is there, but, but again, uh, I, I don't know if the numbers will ever be where they were in the early 90s, to be honest with you. What, why do you think the numbers were so good in the early 90s, Tom, compared to the numbers that, that are happening nowadays? Well, you know, I, I and I, you know, there, there's other associations out there, but but I, I'm talking total numbers, so the associations don't don't matter. I I just think in the '90s it was it was really a thing for the young guys like you and I, Ryan. We were all we're playing every day, you know, playing every weekend, and I I think that that isn't happening as much anymore. I think it's the elite players that have continued that, but the other ones are maybe once a week. Uh, maybe playing with their their partner and playing some co-ed or playing playing very recreational ball, whereas the recreational teams in the day were playing tournaments every weekend also. And, and we just don't see as much of that participation anymore. Now, um, the game kind of continued to grow through the 90s. Super Series. What year did Super Series get, get started for the actual elite program? I mean, SPO always had elite programs, but when did you decide to, you know, figure out this Super Series stuff, and, and how did it come about? Whose brainchild was it? Well, that, that's a good point, and, and I, I'm not going to give you the exact date, but I, quite frankly, I don't know it, but, but I, I can tell you in 1990, we signed an affiliation deal with Softball Ontario, Yep. And part of that deal, that was one of my first jobs in coming into the Slow Pitch Ontario, was trying to get an affiliation with South Pole Ontario and find a beer sponsor for the association. So so in 1990, we, we signed a deal with South Pole Ontario, and with that, became we were given basically the elimination championships. That was run by South Pole Ontario in the day, which provide, as you know, the eliminations provide the, the best of the best. And... So we took that over and, and ran it for a year or two. And then I was getting to know the guys and talking, and, and they were saying, you know, we can't get in, into, into any tournaments because the tournament directors don't want the big, powerful teams. They just want to load up with the D&E teams and, and load their tournaments. So we, we started thinking, and, and quite frankly, I, you know, I, 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 we, we brainstormed, but it, it, I presented this. Uh, to the board, uh, an elite series that would include men's A and women's A and give our elite players the opportunity to participate on a regular basis. So so in the early 90s, uh, the Super Series for men's e, A and B were was started with, with very good success. As, as you probably know, you participated, uh, I'm sure, maybe not in, right off the bat, but not far after that. And then after a couple of years of this, we were getting calls from the B team. And saying, hey, can you do something for us? So we added the B layer in, and then uh, we looked in and we added a, a men's C division and a women's B C division. And then soon after that, we added, a, and we'll talk about it later, I'm sure, our seniors tour. Now, the, the ladies, I had great guests last week with Don Cooper and Tony Cornelos and, and Bruce Collette, who are all big supporters of, of Slow Pitch Ontario and 
Um, I mean, Coop's big with with, uh, with with you trip down the states and ASA and just uh, with Easton. Um, in terms of the ladies' division, I mean, BC was really starting to kind of grow and, and rock here pre-COVID. Um, you know, where's where do you think the the jump in the ladies' interest happened? Like, what transpired to to generate that buzz at the BC level a few years ago when you got things started? Good, good question. Um, I'll be honest with you. The first year or two, it didn't really go all that well. Yeah. Um, but, but again, communication, talking to the women, talking to the girls, giving them the ability to play once every two or three weeks was very unique for them. They never, never saw anything like that. So I think that over the course of the first couple of years, these girls sold the program to their friends and their uh, playing partners. And um, it's developed, and, and and I agree with you. Our women's BC is stronger than ever, and I, I think it'll be even increasing enough that we're looking, Ryan, to even split it up to B and C. Well, good. Yeah. Well, and that's, and that's great for the organization, right? Because, I mean, sometimes those C teams are close to being at that B level, but maybe they're one or two players away from really being able to compete every single weekend against those B teams. And even some of those B teams – are only one or two players away from being able to get bumped to A, right? So, Absolutely. so it's uh, it's good to kind of break them up. That's that's uh, that's that's encouraging, and I'm sure a lot of the women out there are excited about that change as well. They are, you know, and, and our, our Super Series has has unlimited has had unlimited success, and it, it's all about the players and their support of our system and our program. We wouldn't be anywhere without their support, and we grow every year with this thing. And, and again, it's a true testament of the commitment because, as you know. Those guys and girls are coming every second weekend into a city, paying hotel rooms and paying gas and meals, and and uh, we're committed to give them a program that they can uh, enjoy. And uh, they've been supporting it; um, it's been outstanding. It really has. Now, in Ontario, so SPO has been predominantly the main organization that offers the most competitive level of ball in Ontario compared to all the other organizations. Um, I mean, obviously, having the births for the Canadian Championships is a, is a great draw and an attraction. Um, I mean, in, in terms of uh, the bump-ups that happen from C to B to A, I mean, there hasn't been a lot of PT Bruins over the last few years that, you know, started off as a C team and worked their way up. It seems like those C teams get to B, they do well, and then, you know, they, they disappear. You know, why do you think that they're so – some B teams are just dead set on moving up to A and competing. And it's not all of them. Like, there's lots that move up. But there seems to be a, a, a vast, lately, a majority that don't want to move up to play against those A teams. Um, agreed, 100%. And it's, I think it's more perception that, you know, we know the teams and we know the Orioles, we know the Aftershock. And those of the world have, have a little bit of an intimidating air about them to some some players. But you, may, you named uh, the PT Bruins. Mike Hook and the, the boys came up and they played through. And they were a, a competitive team within the A division when they got there. And another one I want to mention is Game on Mobile. Yep. You know, the same type of thing. They took the chances. And, and, and a lot of people don't realize when you get get by the Orioles and, and uh, the Aftershock and maybe a few others of the world, the three, four top teams. Our top B teams can play with, with the rest of our A teams. There's no question about that. But it, it's to get them into that uh, the mode. I, I'm hoping and I've heard this year that we have two B teams coming up and playing in A, so which is positive. But it's a challenge to, to get them to take that step. It really is. No, as an organization, I mean, you have rules – with rostering and success, if you have success, you have automatic bump ups and stuff like that. Um, I mean, you know, being somebody that uh, went to Canadians last year, got to play and um, see kind of all the other provinces and how they've, I mean, Ontario is still always the holy grail when it comes to the sport across Canada. But the other provinces have really um, narrowed the gap a little bit when it comes to the talent level. What do you think about the the roster la rules that have been around for a long time in terms of being able to add some more players to move up? And I know that this is something that comes up with you all the time in meetings and everyone bugs you and says, hey, I need to have more players because this guy's hurt. And I'd be doing a disservice to everybody if I didn't <laughs> ask this question. But, uh, you know, 
why are the rules the way that they are when it comes to the rosters in Slowpitch, Ontario? And what what do you think can be done, um, if anything, to maybe be a little bit more flexible with that stuff? Um, you're right. Th these are issues that are every year. But from our from an organization's perspective, it's twofold. We have to protect all the teams. Sure. In our program. Yeah. And we have to protect the other provinces. Yeah. Um, to a certain extent, or we won't have Canadian championships anymore. Yeah. And and we send four in every classification in most years. And most years where our all four of our teams perform fairly well. Yep. So in the eyes of the rest of the country, they're saying, well, Ontario, Big Bad Ontario is is, is good enough. Why would and, and to be honest with you, if we look back at the last 10 years track record, they're probably right. Sure. So, um, we feel our guidelines are fair. Do they, they, do they at times hinder some teams? Absolutely. I, I won't say that isn't the case. But, but again, within Ontario, too, we have to be fair because we have 50 or 60 teams within our whole program. Sure. And, um, you know, as much I believe it's about participating on a competitive level when we go to the Canadians, and even in Ontario, if we can get our teams that level. And I believe our Ontario teams do compete at a very competitive level within the within the uh, confines of the Canadian Championships right now. For sure. No, I, and I mean, I, I think in last year's first time in five years I got to play in Canadians, I was really, really shocked about how different the other provinces have been. You can't step on the field and know that, okay, I'm playing Quebec two or three, and I'm winning because those teams are studs. Same thing with Alberta. Alberta is sending multiple teams. BC, like, um, you know, the Saskatchewan. I mean, holy moly. I mean, um, but some of those provinces have all-star status where here in Ontario, we don't have that same status, right? So Yeah, we have all. We don't have all-star status because we have the numbers, right? Right, for sure. But, but, but I'll tell you something. The reason these teams are getting better, they're, they're watching the Ontario team. Yes. how they operate it and they're saying hey we got to get better we can't play with these teams yet we have to get better and and i believe our teams have have challenged everybody else to be better for sure i think the bar is clearly set by what's what goes on here in ontario and i mean you know you hear it all the time when it comes to the border battle selection oh there's so many ontario guys what about this guy what about that guy but the fact of the matter is is ontario is built the 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 holy grail of when it comes to the sport of softball here in Canada and and it's great to see the other provinces really striving to improve and compete you know Alberta has won gold medals and great. and you know medals every year and Quebec's done well and I mean we're always in the medal hunt um you know it's great to see teams like Saskatchewan you know beating yeah. beating teams through the round robin that maybe in the past that they haven't I mean it's great when other provinces are doing well um, other than just Ontario. I think it's great for the game, 100%. Um, you know, I, 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 I truly believe that, um, you know, the all-star status that they have, if they take advantage of it, it really, really allows them to narrow the gap. Absolutely. Absolutely. In, in, in terms of uh, just going back to rosters, um, you know, Slopich Ontario this year came out with um, a little bit of a different um, – insurance uh, policies for, for teams in the past, you would insure as, um, as a team, um, you know, all your players got to be registered online and all that stuff. Um, you know, previous us as super series players were paying a super series fee. Um, you know, there's been a change with, okay, now it's just going to go to a per player insurance fee. I mean, what was the brainchild and thought process behind that? And, you know, some misconceptions are out there that well, people think that they've got to play both, right? Where you're, you know, and tournament conveners are paying for insurance for, for, um, you know, for the teams that are registering on the weekends, and and league teams are still paying. Plus, the players are uh, are having to pay the the individual insurance. There's a lot of misconceptions I think out there about you know what this individualized insurance thing is. And maybe you can touch on it a little bit more and give a more clear picture for all the people that do play Slopich Ontario. Yeah, it, it, there's no doubt it's been a challenge. Um, we knew it was going to be a challenge. 
we we've been looking at this for three years. Um, we are we, we consider ourselves as cutting edge and leaders in, in the in the game in the sport in Canada. We've done a lot of research, and, and I'll get into it uh, a little bit in a minute. But I do want to say that individual player registration is the way of the world. Um, and, and I'll give reasons in a minute, but I don't know if you saw this past week that uh, John DiDonatus, the CEO of U-Triple-S-A, just made an important announcement that uh, U-Triple-S-A is going individual registration starting 2021. And they're rolling it out for their adult school pitch at the fall of 2021. <clears throat> Excuse me, if you look at it, it mirrors our model almost to a T. And, and, and I think a lot of the reasons, Ryan, is you mentioned insurance, and we call this a membership, which includes insurance. But when the leagues were running and registering the teams, they were doing all the work, submitting names, but these players were not registering individually. Okay. By the letter of the law, they did not register, they did not sign the waiver, so they don't have insurance. So technically, the league executives would be liable for any lawsuits because if there was no coverage. So, so we looked at this, and, and basically we're making it easy for the leagues now. Players pay $15. They can play anywhere they want within the SPO program. They can play in different leagues and, and only that one-time fee. With, with the Super Series and Senior Circuit, there's an, an additional $10 program fee on top of that, and you know what comes with that. And, and we've done the individual registration with our Super Series guys for a couple of years now with, with, with very good success. So... We just felt that it was time to put the responsibility to play on the player, not on the league, not on the league executive to worry about registration. Now what the league does is just pays a small fee for registration and we provide them with their own insurance policy to cover their executive and with all the other peripheral materials they get. But I, I think the big thing is, is we have to put responsibility on the player. The player should have to go in and check their profile every year they should make sure that the information's updated and current. And, and we felt that, that it was time to go individual. You're right, there's a lot of there's a lot of misconception out there. And we we knew, and it's gonna be an education thing for this whole year for us to, to get through it. But it we, we really feel it's a way to go. We've we've developed a, a mobile app to go with registration. You might be aware of that, but that's your membership card. So once you register, you get a card. There's all kinds of deals on that card, but it gives you your profile on the card, and it, it's your ID card. So we're hoping for the $15. It's a culture change, and uh, we're hoping we can weather the storm. And I truly and honestly believe within two years, every association in North America will be going this road. Well, it, it, it seems to be a lot easier when it comes to being an organizer of a league, as you mentioned, to ensure that that, that money is paid. And you can go on the SPO website and notice that, hey, you know, this guy is or girl is not uh, green on the site. Clearly, they haven't paid their, their, their fee. And I'm sure that over time, you'll create a technology that when the player goes on and pays, it just automatically goes to green and you're not going to have to have somebody individually, um, you know, press a button on your end. Right. right so yeah, and, and, and quite, quite frankly, if you pay by credit card, I believe it goes that way. Right. Away. Sure. It's, well, just, great. it's the EMT that we have to accept yeah. right now. Right. Sure. But, yeah. well, it's good. I didn't realize that if you pay by credit card, the green just automatically goes. That's, that's makes things even better. So. Yeah. And, and um, we will get better with this. It, it, it's yeah. our first year at it, but uh, you know, I know you understand, but there's a lot of people out there that do have questions. So I appreciate you asking those questions for sure. Yeah. So I guess just to clarify, the $15 is covering your membership in Soul Pitch, Ontario. If you want to play on 27 teams in the season, that fifteen dollars covers you for all fifth or all twenty-seven of those teams. All, all as long as they're sanctioned so pitch Ontario teams. Yeah, yeah. right. For, for so sure. If you want to play in four or five leagues, SPO leagues, knock yourself out. The other nice thing about this, Ryan, is, is, is and you know this, you run leagues, and that is that there's a lot of times teams want to go to provincial, but they can't get the body, right? That yeah. They're trying to piece together to go, and all of a sudden now it's going to cost them a hundred and ten more dollars to put a new team in to do that. Now, if your league's affiliated, you can put together a team 
and for an admin fee of ten dollars going to provincial championships and enter and play because all these guys are members already. So it makes it it makes it easier. And it's gonna make it easier for some tournament conveners to get extra teams. Sure. Guys can put it together and go play. Yeah, no, it's it seems to be a, a great forward thinking initiative by Slopich Ontario. And um, you know, I myself personally don't have an issue with it. It's easy and I mean, I sign up uh, for a gym membership. I sign up for lots of different things as an individual. It's kind of the same thought process and, and way that you're doing things. Correct. And we're, 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 we really want to give a bang for our buck if we can, right? And we're working with Rawlings, and, and this whole registration is powered by Rawlings. We, we're having weekly draws, four or five weekly draws for members who have registered. We've got three, one, two, three, four, four grand prize draws of around a thousand bucks or each that we're going to do. Yes. And we're going to offer these specials through the, our app for, for our members to, if they want to recoup that 15 bucks, we'll, we'll, we'll make sure they can do that. Well, I'm going to have to get on this app. I haven't, uh, I haven't even seen that. Really? I'm usually an up with everything and I don't know about this information. So yeah, I'm glad you, can, you can get it on the app store or Google play, uh, SPO mobile. And you search it and away you go. Nice. Well, that's great. Um, you, you spoke about it a little bit earlier, uh, the, the different programs, you know, you know, adding ladies and then, you know, more recently getting into the seniors and creating a seniors program that's a little bit more um, specialized. Um, talk about, you know, where you're at with the seniors game and, and the partnerships that you've created with, if I'm not mistaken, it's Senior Softball USA, correct? Correct. And talk about that partnership and how that's kind of working. Because, I mean, there's so many options for senior softball in the U.S. Um, what what led to the partnership with that particular organization as opposed to maybe some of the other ones that offer out there? Right. Um, well, we, we, we have a fairly strong master senior program in Ontario. And, and, and again, I mentioned earlier, we started a circuit and we bring teams in right from 50 and over up. We're going to have five teams at 75 and over this year um, in that division. So so we're fairly strong. And, and I met R.B. Thomas was the ISSA guy, the senior softball guy, and he runs his own programs. And and while we we both were successful in, in being successful, we, we wanted to add another level if we could. And, you know, you, you, you're well aware of the Softball Canada border battle with our men and women that have been very successful. So we tried to mirror that type of program. Not quite, um, but um, we, every other year we'll send a team in every division there and they bring in three teams and we play a round robin and have some fun with it. And then they come back the next year and we do the same thing. But it, it, it's given our older, our older teams and players the ability to look a little farther ahead and representing Ontario, the province of Ontario, and, and quite frankly, we've had two of them, one there and one here, and our guys are just thrilled to participate in something like that. It, 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 it's truly a, a great event. It really is. Now, the divisions that you offer, what, what do they start at? At 40s? We started at, we've got a 50, a 55, a 60, a 65, and um, this year we're, we're adding a 40, a women's 50, and a 70. Very nice. Yeah. I hope that I can walk at 70. Yeah, me too. you got to see these guys. Honestly, I'm telling you. Yeah. Um, my dad's 76, and I remember him going down to Florida and playing some, some ball down there when he was in his 60s. He doesn't really play a whole lot anymore, but those guys, like at the AAA level, I remember it was called, uh, man, oh, my God, those guys just smashed the ball. And then you had the hard balls and the, and the senior bats and holy. Now, is there a stream that's up for pitchers during those during we, those that program? We we left that up to our membership, and uh, yeah. they approved a screen for sixty five and seventies. Okay, so so fifties and fifty fives and sixties are still playing standard traditional game. No screen. Correct. That's it. correct. Yeah, and nice. that's, what they, that's what they wanted. Yeah, sure. and, and it's great that you leave that that option to the membership and, and leave that out there. You know, let, let's talk about, you know, how the board makes decisions and, you know, the information that you, you get. Um, you know, there's times where rules get changed or, you know, people suggest things and, and it gets tabled. Talk about how, um, you know, what makes the changes, what implements it, and, and sometimes what goes into it. And, and, I mean, we could talk about, and I know it's changed now, but let's talk about the line. 
that was in the batter's box, you know, and what the thought process was with that and why, you know, it, it decided to be something that, you know, was brought in for the year. Um, we're in a unique position with our super series because we can do trial projects. We don't have to go to the membership and get things passed for a rule book because it's a standalone program. So, so any rules, whether it's the line or if, whether it doesn't really matter what it is, yeah. we get input, as you know, you, you see, we communicate with players and that all day long, every day, every weekend. And we hear a lot of stuff and, and we have a committee, a super series committee. And we also have a board of directors, obviously, and we bounce, anything or a lot of things we hear off of uh, our committee, some of our key players. And if it gains any traction, we will then take it to the board level. As I said earlier, for the super series of senior circuit, it doesn't have to uh, get get member approval because it, it's a standalone program. So, so we take a lot of input from our teams and our players. And, and Ryan, I'll be honest with you, you can ask a number of, of players out there. I communicate with those guys all the time and bounce things off them and get their thoughts and you you mentioned two guys uh two guys earlier that uh, bruce collette tony carnello i talked to those guys on a weekly basis i believe you had uh grant garrett on earlier too yeah. and, and i talked to grant a lot and, and 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 these are a couple of guys but i've got a whole slew of guys we bounce things off and and try to get things pointed in the right direction for the betterment of the game and the players we may not agree all the time but I, I truly believe that we're making decisions in the best interest. And that's, I mean, that's important. And I think so many people sometimes think the decisions that get made are just slow, solely uh, Tom Buckins made that decision and that's what it is. And, and it's all on Tom and, and Tom's making these stupid rules and, you know, screw that guy. But at the end of the day, it, 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 it is more than one person that is, is having a voice when it comes to some of those changes. Absolutely, I'm the face. Of, I'm the face of the association, so I take yeah. the heat and and uh, the accolades if they come, I guess too. But sure. but but um, we do communicate with our teams and our players, and and we we have their interests at heart. You know, in the last year, we've had a lot of challenges, as you know. And I've been on probably, I'd say, twenty Zoom calls with our Super Series and Senior Circuit teams, just trying to keep them in the loop and seeing what their thoughts are and. How are we going to attack this season and, and all of that? And we do that all the time. So communication is a key to a successful program. And, you know, you, you talk about the communication piece, which is which is great. Um, you know, I, I've gotten the emails to jump on Zoom calls. I wish that the timings were better for me to be able to actually jump on. But, um, you know, talk about some of the challenges. I mean, last year, SPO didn't run, right? Like, there was no Super Series. There was... There is nothing, and we're facing a lot of uncertainties in Canada um, with COVID. Um, you know, how did it feel to you to just not be at the park all summer? Like, I mean, I know it's something that you just you do. Like, it's just in you. You, you know that you're going to Slopage City to to run a ball tournament, and now I'm, I'm not there. Like, what'd you do with yourself? It was crazy. You know, uh, Ryan, for for thirty years, I spent fifteen to eighteen weekends every year in Slope City. Yep. Last year I did not get there once. And, yep. and, and yes, it was tough. Uh, tough tough personally, but but tough on everybody, right? You know, nothing better and you know that. Get out to a ball diamond on a crisp Saturday morning and start talking to people and just build build momentum. And we didn't see any of that. I know there was some little stuff happening uh, all over the place, but we had to make a very, the toughest decision I've made in my job here was to cancel that program and cancel our season. And I sat looking at my computer screen for 12 minutes before I had to press the send button to do that because we were impacting so, so many people in a lot of ways, but the government just didn't make it. It was impossible for us to do it the way their guidelines were. And we spent April, May, June planning for the unknown. You know, yeah. we were making plans, trying to get, but the, it never got to that level where we got a green light that we could uh, make it happen. Now, I mean, and I mean, we don't, I don't think that we're in much different area right now than what we were last year at this time. I mean, you know, we're, we're in different color codes and, and there's still cases and our medical professionals seem to have an idea, but I still don't believe that anybody truly believe, knows, you know, 
when the end is. And vaccines are great, and I'm excited about all those those people that are getting vaccinated, which hopefully opens the door for us to have a bigger gathering. But you know, I'm running stuff. You're running. Stuff. How are we supposed to plan, not knowing if we can have more than a hundred people in a, in an area, right? Like, agreed. I, I, I'm on the I'm on the phone two three times a week with the ministry yeah. every week, and we're pushing hard. We're pushing. I, I think that I, I I think the only difference now this year from last year is we have a little bit of an understanding of what we're up against. Right. Last year we we had no idea what we're up against. Right. So so as much as we can prepare a little bit, the ministry doesn't really know with these extra variants coming in and the third wave. So so we presented we presented a what we call a, a five page document to the uh, ministry, uh, Minister McLeod on January 25th. It, it's a, uh, it was a request for consideration. And what we did basically was we went through the whole process and basically we said, listen, these 50 pod groups don't work for ve very many people at all. Just the smaller leagues, our bigger leagues, all of our travel teams, our, our programs were all canceled last year because it wouldn't work. So we did up a five-page document outlining all this, but the key to the document, Ryan, was um, they have on their COVID website, uh, COVID Ontario website, uh, a formula, a square footage formula counter. And it, what it is is for big box stores and grocery stores, they can type in their square footage and it spits out, uh, it spits out number of individuals at 100% capacity with distancing. It gives you 50% capacity and it gives you 25% capacity. These are for indoor facilities. So what I did here was I, I figured out the square footage of all diamonds at 200 foot, 250 foot and 300 foot because keep in mind we're representing the youth a little bit on this thing too, right? And, and we plunked those numbers into the counter and I was fell off my chair with some of the numbers. So, so basically at a 200 foot diamond at 25% capacity is about 200 people. Totally. At 250, you're looking at 300 or so people. At 300, you're looking at 500 people based wow. on their formula and based on indoor. So what we've done, we did a we did this chart and we submitted it with our letter. All we're asking for is 50 per diamond. You know, you know, 80, 90% less than the criteria that they give the indoor stores. Right. So, so what we're saying is, hey, if you're doing this for stores, why can't you do it for, for our associations, our softball associations outside? They agree. So, so now this proposal is at the health table. Minister of Health is looking at it. I'm sure we'll get questions on it, but very optimistic that, that this may work. And, oh, and I think you you would be first to it. You you run tournaments, right? And you're involved. Fifty per diamond. We could run almost anything at fifty. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. I mean, yeah. last year I was running, you know, six diamonds a weekend, all individual diamonds with four teams at each diamond, because yeah. that's all I was allowed to do. But because every diamond was its own physical address, I was still able to be at that that number yeah. that you needed to be. So I mean, it was challenging. Um, but we made it work and people got to play ball. Um, but I'm not a big, massive association, like SPO that's running no. a big program like you are that requires so much more, uh, flexibility when it comes to the, the amount of players. And I mean, me as somebody who is doing something on a smaller scale, um, is excited to hear that, that, you know, you put that forward because if that gets approved for you, well then that should get approved for everybody. We're, we're requesting this on the behalf of all diamond sports in the province. Good. So it's That's awesome. for everybody. Cause it's all about the game right now, right? Let's get back to playing. And, and, uh, I got a question for you though, that you were one of the guys that did play and participate in ran tournaments. Did you have any, uh, any, um, COVID cases? Not one, not one. I ran nine weekends in a row, not one COVID case. Slowfish city ran all the, all summer. And um, there wasn't one COVID case out there either. So, so that's part of our strategy too: is give us a chance yep. to prove we can do it. If we can't do it, pull us off. 
Yep, absolutely. You're giving everybody else chances to do things. You know, you're letting the NHL try this. You're you're letting grocery stores do this. Give us the chances all we're asking them with this document here. So we'll see. Well, I mean, if Amazon can open their facilities and have over 600 cases over the course of as long as COVID's been around and still be able to operate, I mean, I know they got shut down recently, but I mean, that's 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 crazy. Like, there, there it's just it's so very uh, all over the place. You know, it, it's not all making sense, and no. that's the biggest issue is is that there's just. The common sense factor is not seeming to prevail on a regular basis. And don't get me wrong, COVID is is a is a scary thing for a lot of people. Um, but as you said, I didn't have any COVID cases. Slovich City didn't have any COVID cases. That should not be um, should not be a big uh, a, an issue. And it's great to see you taking the bull by the horns and the association to spearhead this movement to the to the government of Ontario. And I and I hope that you know we the brighter days are ahead because yeah. you know as well as I do that so much people are just dying to, to be able to play. We're all dying right now. Absolutely. Yeah. For sure. Um, you know, in terms of, um, you know, the, the, the program itself um, from its infancy to where it is now, I mean, all the changes that you have gone through between technology balls, uh, you know, changing of, uh, of um, structure with, um, um, you know, just the mat stuff and, and going to Canadians when there isn't a mat and, and just all the different changes that has had to happen over the course of the last few years. What's the one thing that you have really, really can look at and say, you know what, I'm really proud of, of this particular thing. I know, I know there's a lot of things that you could probably be proud of, but like what's one that just – just stands out that you cannot be more ecstatic that is translated and happened for you in as the CEO of, of Slow Pitch Ontario. Huh. There's two that come out, but I, I, and I may mention two, but our super series program is one. Yep. It is by far the flagship event and, and I may be partial, but I, I think it may be the number one program in Northern uh, North America. I really do. And, and the other thing is the, the way we have developed our communication and our online system, um, that, that's an ongoing challenge, as you know, but we're very proud of what we've accomplished that way. But, you know, I got to say our, our Super Series and Senior Circuit events are looked upon um, by everyone as, as, as flagship events, and, and, and I'm very, very proud of those events. Now, Tom, coming from the Sioux, right, how, how did you end up in, in – in St. Catharines, was it the job? Did the job bring you there? Yeah, it's funny. Like I said earlier, I was a volunteer with Slow Pitch Ontario in the early 80s when we were getting this thing going. And yeah. it, it developed and grew grew legs fairly fast. And and in those days, um, Ryan, I was actually a beer salesman. In oh, okay. I yeah. used to work for Carling O'Keefe. Okay. At that time, Carling O'Keefe and Molson's were merging. So there was going to be a few jobs lost in the Sioux. So they, uh, Molson's offered me a job up in Thunder Bay. Um, I, 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 the Sioux is far enough north for me right now. And you've been up there. I'm sure you've had hockey up in, up oh, yeah. in Thunder Bay, Kenora area. Yeah. So I, I just didn't feel at that time in my life I wanted to do that. So I, I, I walked away from the beer business. And not two months, three months later, uh, Slow Pitch Ontario called because they knew I had that marketing and promotions background. They knew I was a player. So they asked if I'd want to come in and, and kind of set the association up and move it in a positive way and like i said earlier they offered me a one-year contract and uh i'm still there 31 years later now uh who was the person that brought you in who was that spearheaded person are they still around do they have any involvement like how has things changed since you were in in year one and, and the structure of of it like how how did how's it evolved that, 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 that's a very good question when, when i came in I, I was asked by a gentleman named chuck pete Okay. And, uh, Chuck was uh, he, he's an American-born uh, player, and he he was one of the he was one of the uh, originators of slow pitch in Ontario, and he started the, the he started along with a few others, and shortly thereafter, Bill Miller came in and was involved. And when I came in in '89 to take this job, I I kind of moved into a 
a bee's nest because it, right at that time I was unaware that SPN and uh, SPO was having a little bit of a power struggle and Bill Miller was taking some grew and going and forming SPN in that year. And uh, so I came into Full Pitch Ontario at the same time and uh, trying to build our own program. Talk about the relationship. I mean, you said it was a bee's, bee's nest back then. You know, Bill Miller did his own thing. God rest his soul, built a Slow Pitch National and has done a, did an amazing job. And it's, a, you know, a Canada-wide brand. You know, how is, how is that, um, I don't want to say battle, but how, how did that relationship come about? Because, you know, between now or back then and now, I, clearly the relationship is, is good. I mean, you guys have a great working relationship. Yeah, Bill and I were always friends. We we knew I knew Bill back when I was in the beer business uh, and OB Slope, you probably remember in the yeah. day. And, and I was an OB rep at the time, so I knew Bill, and and we've always remained friends. Like we, you know, there there was never internet. We knew we were competitors, but there was enough out there to share. But but the, the, my challenge was that you know I had to build my own team when I get got in here, and and coming from the Sioux, you know, I I wasn't really plugged into. Southern Ontario and, and the so I just got on the call phone and made some calls and one of the first calls I made and Ryan you'll, you'll know the name was Ron Hawthorne and Ron is still with us and that's oh, been years and Ron's the president of, of our association that was one of the first calls I made was was Ron but I, I built up my own team and as you know to be successful you got to surround yourself with people that you can trust and work with. And that was my main goal. And uh, you know a lot of the guys now that are involved, but that's kind of the way we built. We're, we're a family. We're a team. And, and we have a lot of fun together. Now, I mean, it, it's it's incredible the journey that you've come from the Sioux and, you know, coming to the St. Catharines and building this, you know, amazing uh, organization in Slopich, Ontario. You talk about some of the days where you come to the office and you maybe bang your head off your desk and go, you know what? Like, why? Why is this got to happen? You know, take COVID aside because, you know, clearly that's one of the, the worst things that's ever happened to anybody. But talk about maybe those days that you come to the office, you want to bang your head off your desk and go, like, what the heck is wrong? Like, why is this happening? Yeah, well, yeah, we and we have those days. And, you know, you mentioned COVID. I've been doing it for the last 365 days. You know, why is this happening? Sure. But, but but at the end of the day, you just – I think the biggest challenge, Ryan, is, is you know that a lot of teams just don't want to play up. Yep. They want to hide. They want to go play D over here and then change their name, and they want to go D over here. And You know, we come in on a on a Monday morning maybe, and we, we look at the results of some events, and you maybe send your stuff in, and we look again, and we see these guys or this player or this player, and you just shake your head and you say, why can't they just go and play where they're supposed to play? And you, right. that's a bang your head moment because it's, sure. it's frustrating on everybody that way and only a few that really ruin it for everyone. You know, that, that's one of the, the very frustrating things that we have here. And quite frankly, it hasn't changed in 30 years. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a crazy problem. And, I mean, there's, there's not really a, a real great answer to no. kind of fix that, hey, move up or hey, move down or – you know, those E guys that aren't really ranked and they don't want to play the A level that maybe they should, but they want to play with their wives and girlfriends. I mean, you know, I, I myself personally have created something that I, I'm trying and we'll see what happens. Um, but but overall, um, you hit the nail on the head about participation. I mean, that's what this is about overall, is trying to get as many people as possible to participate in a, you know, a, an organized uh, sanctioning event every weekend, which is you know what you guys have, have figured out which is which is great yeah and, and that's what you you figured it out too you 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 found a niche there and and you're providing an opportunity for players to play how can that be wrong right and, and we're all going to grow together if we can all get back on the field and provide this opportunity for sure and, and i mean um in terms of the the the, the fundamentals going forward um, with the with the with the presentation that you gave to the government and the, and the feedback that you're getting, I mean, you know, when the time the show comes out, uh, it'll be great that uh, um, people will be able to see the work that that's been put in by SPO because nobody knows what happens behind the scenes, right? And so many people think they know, and it's always nice to actually just get the face of the organization to go. You know what? This is what's going on. Here we go. 
and keeping people in the loop and doing the Zoom calls clearly is a great thing that you've done. Uh, you know, there, there, there's people out there who, you know, maybe don't know who Tom Bucking is, but I mean, you you always have been somebody that's uh, ne never shied away from a conversation. No, no, I, and, you know, and I love the game. I just love the game. I love talking the game. And, and, and I think it's important now more than ever to keep interest going because there's a lot of people out there that aren't real confident that we're going to be playing, right? And we have to just keep communicating. I, I really believe getting back to the COVID thing, vaccine's a game breaker and a game changer. And, and I think we see some light at the end of that tunnel also, you know. Well, if you could say the overall state of the game pre-COVID, you know, let's take COVID aside and at the end of the 2019 season when everything was rocking and rolling for SPO, where, where would you say the state of the game was uh, back then? We, we were in a good position. Uh, in fact, we made a decision at our 2019 AGM to go player registration, individual registration. We were very excited about it and wanted to launch it in a positive way. And then um, all of a sudden, boom. We got hit, and, and you know, there's no excitement of, of a new program when there's no interest in the program. And right. we're struggling with that right now. The same thing is, as much as we're, we've opened individual registration up, we're not really pushing it because we don't want to say to people, hey, you got to register. We want to know we're going to be out there playing before we register. So, so um, you know, that, that, that's been a challenge this year, but that was a very exciting time for us is that that's a very big change for Slow Pitch Ontario and a culture change for our players is to move that route. And Slow Pitch Ontario is what it is. It's Slow Pitch in Ontario. Ever thought of, of figuring out a way to be a Canada-wide uh, type of a program, Tom? Or are you always focused on the Slow Pitch Ontario only scenario? We, we Slow Pitch Ontario, we've got our hands full of Ontario with the amount of teams we have here. Yeah. We have, we have been approached um, by other provinces. We're willing to help at any time. Um, I, I'm still, I believe, a, a, a Canadian director for the USSA. And uh, in the day, Don Dean and that senior and I had talked, and we were looking at rolling out another program. But, Ryan, there's just too much out there right now. You know, let, let's focus on what we do well and uh, keep it in Ontario right now. It's interesting that you say that you're the Canadian director for USSA. There's a lot of people uh, in other provinces that would say otherwise. And, 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 and trust me, I don't put that on my business card. But uh, it, it's, if you look on their site somewhere, uh, I'm listed somewhere there. Well, you, you, you've had a good relationship with UTRIP for a long time. I mean, teams have always gone down from, from SPO programs to go play in the Florida Worlds and and whatnot and yeah. yeah we have a good day donnie did as junior and i we talk and we're friends and things that uh, they're a tremendous group and uh you know um it uh it is what it is you know they're they're a little bit better position than we are because they can play the game a little bit we're not being able to play right now for sure well um you know let, let's end things off on uh, on a high note here um canadian championships have, have uh, been ran at Slopich City. Um, how many Canadian championships has Slopich Ontario been a part of running since the inception? I'm gonna put you on the spot. I'm gonna make yeah, you think yeah, on the spot. We we were in winter. Yep. Um, we were at Slopich City twice and we we hosted the uh, Canadian um, Masters out at TA Sportsplex up in North London. Uh, one of the only years it was the Canadian Master Slow Pitch Championships in, in, in South Pole, Canada. So you may know better than I do, but I'm thinking that's the four we have. No, but in terms of how many have, have SPO hosted? Well, those uh, are been, ones that our associations have hosted. That, yeah, your association has hosted. Those are those the four that we, we've kind of been involved in. And the other ones were all kind of ran by South Pole, Canada or somebody outside of SPO. Correct. Yeah. Got we try to partner and we would prefer an organizing committee to host it and we would partner and give them support. Yeah. Which is, which is a great, uh, a great way to do things. Well, Tom, I, I've taken up uh, almost an hour of your time and uh, I appreciate you, uh, um, you know, coming on and, and chatting in the embassy of, uh, of world softball TV here on, uh, on AS TV. I hope that maybe uh, I know you've got partnerships with Rogers, but uh 
I hope maybe over some time here we can uh, we can get uh, some some SPO games on uh, on amateur sports TV. We we'd be more than willing to look at that absolutely, and and I, I do appreciate on behalf of the association the time today. Uh, like I said, any time we can sit down with and talk this great game is not a bad night. Awesome. Well, Tom, I look forward to seeing you at Slopage City this summer. Uh, keep up the great work when it comes to uh, getting us back on the field. There's nobody uh, nobody better that I'd like to see uh, pushing the envelope with the government than, uh, than than your organization because you guys got great clout and uh, and a good backing. So appreciate that, Ryan, and uh, stay safe. And uh, hopefully, we do see you soon. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, Tom. Okay. That was Tom Bucking here with uh, with Slopich Ontario. Great, uh, great guest. Lots of uh, great information for all the players out there. Um, it's going to be an exciting summer. It sounds like things are uh, moving in the right direction, which is uh, great to hear. And um, we're looking forward to uh, to a great summer on the ball fields. And uh, it's nice to hear uh, Tom pushing the envelope here with uh, with the government. Um, for me, Ryan Wood. Another week of uh, World Softball TV here on Amateur Sport TV. And uh, we're going to get some uh, continuously great guests every single week here, Tuesday nights, um, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on AmateurSport.TV. Until next week, thanks a lot for coming out, and I look forward to seeing you at the Diamond.